Hello, you're watching News Click and we're talking about what the Washington Post is calling the intelligence coup of the century. Uh, the story is about Crypto AG, a Swiss uh, firm that has been making encryption, well, all kinds of, uh, actually all, all sorts of equipment. Uh, but what we're talking about today specifically is the Z, uh, ZDF and Washington Post story detailing how the CIA has essentially been listening to or uh, been decrypting information or conversations uh, with between allies, its allies, its adversaries of 120 countries for decades. Uh, Prabhu Bukhasta, News Click Editor-in-Chief is joining us for all the, uh, the juice on this actually quite wide-ranging story which goes into history, it goes into current uh, espionage and counter-espionage as well as the politics of technology and also what is going to happen in the future given 5G and things like that. So for me to start with what is this Washington Post story all about and why does it come out now? Because it's something that we've known about for at least 20 years. Let's park that issue right now. Why has it come out now? This is a story which did come out earlier in Baltimore Sun, I think in 1995. And then also there have been other people who have written on it. Mm -hmm. The essential story was that the United States, the Central Intelligence Agency or the NSA, mm -hmm. and the German intelligence owned the basically crypto AG. Mm -hmm. They had an agreement by, by in, the, in, a, in some way by which they owned the, they put in money, they owned the company and later on the CIA or United States even brought out, bought out the Germans. They paid some extra money and bought them out. It was entirely controlled by them. So this people came to not the other European countries but to Switzerland thinking that this is a neutral, neutral country. Countries. Therefore, if you buy equipment from Swiss, Swiss companies, you are likely to be safe. Okay. This is the understanding. Mm. So what they got was cryptographic equipment by which you could go communicate to each other and if you had the keys, mm. then you could actually be able to read what was being sent to you. Right. That's a standard cryptography as you know. Now what happened in this particular case was they actually embedded the key into the machine itself. So that for all others, if you, it would still be encrypted. But in CIA, they could recover the key if they, they, if they had access to the communication. So it's as if you are sending a key along with the communication, but that key only could be seen by the United States, NSA or CIA, whichever agency was involved. And they could then uh, decrypt the information. So this went on for about four decades. And in fact, it came to light, apart from other things that might have been going on or the uh, talks about this, it came to light much more when the Iranians caught on to it. Yeah. And they arrested a AG Crypto, uh, Crypto AG is one of their engineers in Iran. And they kept him in for nine months. And then they, they paid about $1 million, Crypto AG paid $1 million to get him back. And they wanted to recover this money from this guy. Mm. So he then found out. In fact, then he started asking his friends and relations in the company. What was What's this all on? about? What's yeah. going on? And he discovered this whole issue that actually they were breaking their own cryptographic equipment to help the United States. Mm. Now, this stopped for a different reason. It stopped because most people, once computers became prevalent, right. The switch to digital communication mm. and then our communication became really computers yeah. and the internet. This is the way today we communicate and therefore CryptAge's mode of communication is not the one we use today mm. and therefore this company is no longer central to whatever the US and others are doing. Mm. In the case of US... In fact, so in fact uh, the German intelligence agency in fact backed up, pulled out of this whole operation way back in, and like you said earlier, the CIA then took over the entire yeah, about, state. About 20 years 20 down years the ago, line, the yeah. Germans said, you know, you run the whole stuff, yeah. you know, we don't really done. want to be, we are done with it. But I think the other part of it is also important. What happened subsequently? That all the companies who are US-based companies, manufacturing equipment, if you remember, when we were relatively younger, Cisco routers used to be used widely. Yeah. Then we had the Juniper routers. Mm -hmm. Both of these now we know had NSA backdoors. Snowden has made that public. 
So all of the equipment, the communication equipment that came from the United States, from their manufacturers, had NSA backdoors. So this is a part of the story that it wasn't just crypto AG we are talking about with Snowden. And if you go to Vault 7 of mm. WikiLeaks, mm. they have identified also, they've given their, there's a wiki on that apart from uh, what Vault 7 itself has. Mm. The wiki on Vault 7 gives details of how many backdoors of what equipment what are there, widespread how widespread it was. was there. And you'll find that almost everything we used had backdoors. <clears throat> One of the major issues in this mm. is that this seems to have been a collaboration between the manufacturers of software as well as hardware, hardware right. so that the US had these backdoors built in right from the beginning. Yeah. And this is something that uh, they had done earlier with Crypto AG, now we know. Mm -hmm. And this is what they have also done with their own companies, as well as with other companies who collaborate with them or under their influence, talking about the, the Cold War, battle has to be won, the, the battle against the ISIS, mm -hmm. the global war on terror, mm -hmm. the n number of wars, wars they are fighting. And as of now, the war against China, the uh, war against uh, Russia, it's not a shooting mm. war, mm. but it's nevertheless no, it's a, a trade a war, a political of, war yeah, of yeah. a different kind. So this then comes in, that this, this is how the collaboration that takes place between the companies and the state. government, the mm. state, has been something we have known. And the crypto AG brings it out that how, how direct it was for when it was, you know, uh, 40 years, 30 years back, yeah. that basically from the 50s to 90s, this is what the major uh, encryption model was really being sabotaged by the United States using Swiss, the Swiss company. Giving them essentially access to all sorts of uh, almost unlimited sort of in data as well as communications within governments themselves. So everything ranging from Operation Condor like we talked about and, and how uh, the U.S. essentially uh, had knowledge of what was going on in these countries in the 70s, going into then the Falklands where uh, it's being said let's, that... Let's be very clear, whatever the Argentinian government did, yeah. the Chilean government did, who were also collaborating with the United States at the time. Yeah. In fact, the Operation Condor was spearheaded by the United States. All of this was also internal communication within themselves, how illegal things were, what are all the legal violations they were doing, all of this the CIA knew mm. uh, because essentially the crypt, whatever was encrypted was known to them and the state-to-state -state communication was also encrypted. Mm. That means anything that Chile or Argentina talked among themselves is also, also uh, available to them. And that's what one of the organizations who works on this, they have asked for now, that you've never made the documents regarding Operation Condor public. Yeah. Now, if now since you're we know, declassifying this. Now that we know that you hacked it. into all of it, <laughs> right. that means you have this whole documents of the communication, you should declassify them. That's yeah. the demand that has come out now. So I guess that leads to the question of, of the timing of this declassification and, and also of the fact that Washington Post is doing this story at this time. Uh, what are the sort of implications of that or, or the, the backstory to that? You know, this, of course, as we know, it's almost impossible to say why somebody or an organization has done something. That's something only they can say. Yeah. We can only speculate, speculate on that. Yeah. And one of the arguments is because Huawei is now under the crosshairs of the US government, that this story is being released to say, well, Americans are doing it earlier. So Huawei, this is the threat. Huawei yeah. will be doing it. Now, Americans have been saying Huawei is doing it. And a lot of people have argued that, well, you know, since all your companies are doing it, why are you just making Huawei one single company which is responsible for backdoors? Huawei, in fact, is a different problem. It knows it's breaking into a world which is dominated by Western equipment, particularly American equipment. Right. So they are saying we'll be very foolish if we allow any backdoors, because if we do, our market is gone. Mm. Now, there the American argument is, well, you know, there are software updates. They don't, all of it that they give, that may not have any of these things mm. because they have allowed their software to be completely audited in right. the UK and other places, which is something most companies will not do. Will not do. And the, the problem that has been there with Huawei software, like with Cisco, like with other companies, is buggy software. Mm. Software is never that clean. Sure. 
but the problem of backdoors has never been found in any of this uh, analysis. So the, so the Huawei argument has been that we will be very stupid, we will lose our market completely. Mm. Unlike the American companies who still have a market even after the fact that everybody knows they have backdoors, their market hasn't taken such a hit. Yeah. So this is, this is the, uh, shall we say, the challenge that Huawei is breaking into a market dominated by Western countries. Mm. So they have been ultra careful on this. So the idea is, is this a story at the moment it brought out a, to do show that this is the normal course of uh, things and therefore Huawei is suspicious and therefore to strengthen the argument against Huawei. This is one, one part of a possible explanation. The other explanation is that Bezos is very unhappy because he lost a $10 billion contract to Microsoft. Donald, Trump, Donald Trump's direct intervention, mm -hmm. specifically because he owns Washington Post mm -hmm. and Trump did not like something that Washington had posted, reported on him. Therefore, it's a Trump versus uh, mm -hmm. Bezos war. Yeah. Clash I would, of egos. Clash of egos. I would, I would sort of leave that question aside. But it's a very interesting point that we need to also register that how to contain Huawei has become now a major issue. Mm -hmm. And if you see Europe, where the European Union and Britain, United Kingdom, both of them allies of the United States, they seem to be dragging, dragging their foot on Huawei. They have not bought the line. And Boris Johnson, who wants a good trade deal from the United States, also has not bought the line. And he has not banned Huawei as Trump was demanding. So this is one part of it, that Huawei, in spite of all the opposition, all the bans and so on, is the only player at the moment who can give complete 5G, 5G. solutions. Yeah. And therefore, European players, European governments, if they want to give 5G to their people, mm. or to be left behind from the Chinese, yeah. or from countries which use Chinese equipment, yeah. then That's have to build a 5G network. Yeah. So therefore, they are also accepting mm. that without Huawei, it can't be done. Mm. So they say core things we will keep European manufacturers, other things we will give to Huawei. Mm. This is the kind of compromise they seem to be made. It's interesting to see what the Attorney General of the United States, Barr, has said. Mm. He has said, well, US cannot fight Huawei like this. We have to buy Ericsson or Nokia or both and prop them up to fight Huawei. It seems to be that he is essentially saying the crypto AG line is what we should take. Yeah. Except that he's saying it publicly. That was done quite I mean, so you're calling uh, surreptitiously. It the, the, the intelligence coup of, of the century, and you have that model established, so then why, why re reinvent the wheel as such? So just do it that <laughs> way. Do it directly. Except that that was an intelligence coup. It was done in secret. Yeah. This should be done in public uh, eye. If I can ask you just this uh, out of personal interest as much as anything else, when, when we say that the CIA or, or the German uh, intelligence agency has invested in a company or owns a company secretly, uh, where does that money come from and, and how, how is that sort of process happening? And similarly, when they sort of divest from it, when they get rid of, liquidate their assets in these companies, does that money go back to the intelligence agency and remain sort of like a fund for... You see, the US is a huge number of funds which are run by NSA, CIA, Defense Department, a lot of the, for instance, venture capital funds, mm -hmm. there are also funds which are run by the CIA, NSA. Yeah. In fact, some of the investment in Google, the algorithm itself, mm -hmm. initially funded by, again, a company, which is a venture capital fund run by the military establishment. Right. So this is quite widely known <laughs> that they invest in key technologies well ahead of time mm. because they know others are way behind mm. and they need to be ahead of the market. Mm. Therefore, they invest in it. And when they invest in it, obviously, they have various layers through which they do it. Right. Their budgets are not open. Oh, not open. Their yeah. budgets are not open. And those budgets, what they're used for are not clear. And then, of course, you have various, you know, secrecy rules by which the money is squirreled away and it's controlled, the investor, investment funds are controlled by their agents again. Mm -hmm. Their agents may be in public eye or something else. Right. So there are various ways they do it. So let's face it, there's a huge investment budget mm -hmm. in under the control of the US uh, military, which is used for a lot of Security civilian, establishment. civilian activities yeah. in terms of tech. Mm -hmm. 
because a lot of the technology is dual use. So therefore, that instead of sure. the government investing in it, the U.S. model has been that the private sector do it. We'll invest in, in the sense. private sector. We'll tell them we are the military. We are investing in you. We are the intelligence agency. We are investing in you. Quid pro quo, hmm. and that's the basis of the military-industrial really, complex. Military-industrial <laughs> complex is really much close. And now with encryption on all of our devices, I mean, I, I suppose the uh, the range of this sort of technology or or all of this is so much more widespread because it's not only about I suppose espionage uh, based on state communications, but it's also individuals and organizations that are outside of of that framework. Yes, monitoring people's communication, breaking the standard encryption is basically a part of the global watch. As you know, this is being done in India, it's being done in the United States, this is the, routinely is being done by governments. Mm -hmm. How many people, to what extent, and the, extent, in the, the, the cooperation with the private companies, this is the key this question. Is the key question. Right. Right. See, yeah. We saw recently, in fact, there was a massive uh, hiring drive for, for engineers at, at the NTRO. Uh, and the Center for Dele Development of Telematics here in New Delhi, uh, massive growth in numbers and essentially some most of their operations are these kind of general public surveillance operations. So it, it, it's interesting, I'll just quickly bring in uh, an India angle because of course India and Pakistan were both also nuclear adversaries, uh, we, we know the history of um, what that is. Uh, but both of these countries also bought this equipment uh, anything specific that you've heard from, from the Indian side that kind of... Well, I, you know, as far as the crypto AG, how much of the Indian military and Pakistan military bought it, I don't know. Because list of 120 countries I have not gone through. Right. But it was a, a thought to be neutral and therefore a lot of countries bought this equipment. Yeah. So it's quite possible that the Indian government and others would have. India was aware of the fact that the US was a adversary state as far as intelligence operations went and they wanted to be opaque to it. Mm. That was then. Mm. Uh, Cisco for instance routers were not used right. in Indian military and I have been told because they knew that Cisco had backed those. Mm -hmm. So this was the state then. But now we seem to have handed over a lot of our key facilities or digital infrastructure of this kind to essentially Israeli private companies. Right. And these Israeli private companies have come out of the Israeli military establishment. And again, there's a very close link between the Israeli military establishment, CIA and NSA. And a lot of the funding is also coming from those sources. So this is, it's not Israel funding all of it. So these are the issues that we need to flag. Yeah. That Pegasus, if it was being used in India, it's also true that that is a part of a larger operation, which, which is maybe relationship between the Israeli military establishment, security establishment, the Indian security establishment, and all these things you are talking about, NTRO, etc., are really a part of that. Part of that. Uh, so do you think, for example, there should be maybe a push from, from our end, at least uh, in India, to figure out what of these communications during this period, what e equipment was being used, uh, should people be asking these kind of questions now, now that the US has declassified some documents? Used, uh, should people be asking these kind of questions now, now that the US has declassified some documents? Uh, do you think that will be sparked off? Because I definitely uh, remember seeing that both uh, both India and Pakistan are on the list and, and uh, there is some... You see, a lot of the information regarding India's classified uh, issues, hmm. CIA has already declassified. Hmm. And so I'm not sure that we'll glean Required. much more from right. it. And also the cable gate is brought out later than that. Mm -hmm. So much more of information mm -hmm. what the US Embassy. Of course, that's low-grade information. Yeah, yeah. That's not high-grade yeah. information. But yes, I think there is a case now, uh, just as the uh, American group that I talked about has demanded mm -hmm. that Operation Condor should be declassified. Mm -hmm. well, there's a, there should be a demand that the CIA or NSA, whichever agency was a key snooping agency, mm. declassify whatever they gleaned from the Operation 
uh, crypto AG, yeah. and that should be at least made available to the Indian public. Operation Rubicon, as they uh, Operation <laughs> Rubicon, as they call it. All right, thanks very much, Prabir, for that. Uh, so there you have it. That's that's the story of the day on this front, the intelligence coup of the century, and some of the context in which this story uh, has taken place over the decades and and how it's going to go forward in the what is going to be a at some point a 5G world. Uh, thank you for watching today and stay tuned to Newsday.